Hello and uh, welcome to the debate. I'm Marzia Hashimi. Thanks so much for being with us. Well, after invading Afghanistan in 2001, U.S.-led forces continue to contribute to Afghan fatalities. Regular Jones strikes occur with Washington always claiming that it has killed militants. Well, the questions are, why are there still so many militants almost 13 years after Washington and its allies have entered the country? And if they could not bring security to the country in more than a decade of fighting, why do they want to prolong their presence? Stay with us as we take a look at the latest out of Afghanistan. U.S. President Barack Obama has told the Pentagon to prepare for the withdrawal of all troops from Afghanistan by the end of the year in case the bilateral security agreement, BSA, remains unsigned. Afghan President Hamid Karzai has resisted the U.S. pressure to sign the agreement, saying he will not do so until the end of his term later this year. Karzai's defiance has angered the White House. The fact that President Karzai has indicated that it is unlikely he will sign the BSA means that uh, if, if he doesn't sign it, it is uh, at least possible that a, a successor Afghan government might sign it, but that pushes us later into the year. And the longer we go without a signed BSA, the, uh, by necessity, the uh, more narrow in size and ambition the mission for a post-2014 force would be. The BSA would keep about 10,000 U.S. troops in Afghanistan for 10 years, but Karzai's refusal to sign the agreement is said to be out of his anger at the U.S. military tactics in his country, especially raids on Afghan homes. The U.S. has also taken some measures that many believe are aimed at pressuring Karzai to toe the line. U.S. forces have raided a radio station in Afghanistan's Logo province. Press TV has learned that the troops broke all the equipment in the radio station and detained the radio station's owner and two people working there, taking them to an undisclosed location. Earlier, at least 14 Afghans were killed in an airstrike by U.S. forces in southern Afghanistan. The attack happened in Dai Chupan district in the province of Zabul. The U.S. invaded Afghanistan in 2001 with the stated aim of toppling the Taliban regime and dismantling al-Qaeda terrorist group. Despite this, Washington has repeatedly reached out to the Taliban. It is also accused of entering a strategic partnership with al-Qaeda outside Afghanistan, particularly in Syria, to achieve its regional goals. The war in Afghanistan has so far claimed the lives of large numbers of Afghans. Many in the country believe that the security under the U.S.-led occupation has never improved. Well, I'd like to welcome my guest out of London, former U.S. Marine and now activist Mr. Ken O'Keefe. And out of Washington, president of Middle East Research Center, Richard Hellman. Thank you both gentlemen for being with us. Let's start this off in Washington with uh, Richard Hellman. Well, Washington continually talk about killing militants in their drone attacks, but rarely talk about the effect of these drones on the civilian population. Uh, do you think that U.S. forces uh, dehumanize the uh, Afghans? No, I don't think so. In fact, I think uh, the U.S. forces go out of their way to avoid collateral damage, uh, any uh, uh, killing, injuring, or destruction of property of civilians. Now. No military force is perfect, but I believe that the U.S. and NATO forces have been exemplary. In fact, the only ones uh, better than the U.S. forces in uh, Afghanistan are the uh, Israeli uh, forces that strike uh, rocket firing and mortar firing positions in Gaza, in the Gaza Strip. Okay. They are probably uh, the best in the world, but the U.S. For US forces are better, and I, I think we're going to stay there quite a while. All right, Mr. Kinnokeef, what do you think about that comparison? Israelis are the uh, best in the world, the second best, uh, I guess, at killing. Uh, are the Americans your take, sir? Well, uh, you know, it is really almost like an alternate reality, uh, uh, an alternate universe that someone would say such a thing. Having been to Gaza, lived in Gaza, and experienced the pain of the Samuni family and so many others who were treated as subhumans and literally executed executions in front of children and all sorts of uh, madness like this, we can also see that the same thing has occurred That's, in uh, Afghanistan. This, in this last week, are, in this last are, week, this my mother lies. is in this. 
Yeah, I don't He's know why you're O'Keefe. interrupting me. You're but lying again. Because you're, li- you're lying again. So the Samuni family. Word of it. The Samuni family in Gaza was herded you're into a stories. home. You're and once they up. were herded into that home, they were slaughtered by rocket fire in which 29 members of the Samuni family were killed and lied next to the bodies of their dead parents. And their parents oftentimes no, lied dead to their is, dead uh, children for four and a half bold, days. Keith. And they were not allowed this any medical bold. attention because this the Israeli, is, the Israeli military is forces were... This you have crack, no okay. honor whatsoever. You are this a chicken a hawk crack. prostitute. This is a big In crack. Or, your job is you're, to sell American crack. lives down the river for Israel. This is a crack, you have O'Keefe. more loyalty to. Th- this is a crock, O'Keefe. You are a prostitute a for crack. Israel. Plain okay, well, let, me, and let me get back at uh, Let me get Washington. Uh, let me turn back at Mr. Hellman. We, we just talked about as far as the dehumanization. Mr. Hellman, hold up, please. We were just talking about the dehumanization of basically wherever. The American military goes, and we have seen now. We have seen many former American soldiers in Afghanistan, in Iraq, talking about basically that they didn't even see the Iraqis or the Afghans as human beings. So my question is that the United States now has been in this country almost 13 years. Why do they want to continue to stay there if they haven't been able to bring security to the country now? Isn't it time to basically cut their losses and run? No, I think that the U.S. military has seen itself uh, as a protector of democracy and human rights in Afghanistan. In fact, no women, no women were allowed to go to school before these last 13 years, and uh, there was a a lot of brutality against uh, women and minorities and others. And I think the, while no military force is perfect, the U.S. forces have done their best to help established democracy in Afghanistan, and we want to see it, uh, uh, leave it in a better state than we uh, found it, I'm sure our military does. And uh, people say that, well, the Russians were there, the British were, th- were there, and no one has successfully uh, been a- had a successful result in Afghanistan. I believe the U.S. military is going to be the first to have a successful um, a completion of their mission in Afghanistan how, and how leave the country free, democratic. How long does that take, long does that take for that success with right, with to come right, about, right, Mr. Hellman? Right, right, that 13 right. years, almost 13 well, years, they have well, not in, had success on the ground. How well, long how about, do you see how, that it second. takes the United well, States to have this success in Afghanistan? Let me answer. Let me tell please you how do, long. Please do. Let me tell, may I tell you how long? Yeah, look, it took a long time uh, after World War II with Japan. It took a long time with Germany, even some of Germany's allies. So it takes some time, but the U.S. is not an occupier. The U.S. is helping the government of Afghanistan, and the U.S. military wants to have a better result as they leave Afghanistan than, uh, for example, when they left Iraq without a status of forces agreement, and there's been chaos afterwards. So I think that President Obama and and, uh, Secretary Hagel and uh, and Secretary Kerry and others working with uh, NATO leaders and working with Karzai's successor at the end of this year will come up with a, with a status of forces agreement or BSA and I believe that that will provide the way for the Afghans to rule themselves to, to maintain their independence, their proud history, their security and okay. rights for all including women and children and those who did not have rights under the Islamist uh, Taliban in the past. So I think we're going to leave the country, the society, the culture, and the political structure in a better uh, situation okay. than well, what Mr. some Ken naysayers O'Keefe, let me get you in on this. Uh, Mr. Ken O'Keefe, it might be, it can be a surprise to you, as our guest in Washington said, that the United States is not an occupying force, and I'm sure it could be a, quite a surprise to the Iraqis and, and the Afghans and many other people in the world. However, looking at this situation right now, what we have had, uh, even today, that, again, uh, many people have been killed. Uh, there are some that say that the United States' drone attacks right now is actually to exert more pressure on the Karzai government to before Karzai leaves out of office to actually sign the security pact of extending the forces there. Your take, uh, Ken O'Keefe. The two the two well, the Ken O'Keefe, have Washington, to say hold up. London, go ahead, please. The first thing I have no to say is that this gentleman cannot keep his mouth shut for a moment. 
ultimately, let's talk about women's rights in Saudi Arabia because the United States has no problem propping up this ridiculously horrendous regime in Saudi Arabia where women can't even drive a car. We have no problem providing the best weapons America can produce to Saudi Arabia. America could care less about the women of Afghanistan or the world for that matter. Let's also revisit history, and these are absolute facts. I wanna, the fact I is that the pretext you. for invading I Afghanistan, you. you don't have any honor, do you? I agree you cannot with you. keep. Okay, fine, fair enough. I agree so, with you. Uh, absolutely. I agree this with is you. The, this, do, can you keep your do, mouth do, shut? We can do, you keep we your mouth do shut? In Saudi Arabia. Can you keep Mr. your Keith, mouth I agree shut? With you. And Mr. Hellman, have Mr. Hellman, I will give you opportunity no, to talk. Mr. Hellman. Mr. Hellman, I agree with you, Mr. Mr. Hellman, you can disagree you or you can agree, you that we but you're going to do so in, at your own time. Do, we should Mr. Do Hellman, in Saudi you hold Arabia. up. It's not your turn. London, go ahead. Thanks, Mom. The fact is that the pretext for invading Afghanistan was based on the lie that Osama bin Laden was responsible for the attacks on 9-11, when the fact is that we know the FBI has admitted and oh, no charges no. were ever formally oh, br please. brought against Osama bin oh, Laden. Please, oh, the please. FBI admitted Oh, what please. a chicken hawk, Israeli oh, stooge please. prostitute this man is. Oh, please. This is all oh, he please. can do what a, what a, because he's nothing more than a chicken hawk those, who will assail one of those, American sons and daughters deniers, into yet another war for Israel. Denying, and this is exactly what the traitors in Congress are yeah. all about. This man you're is denying, a disgusting example the, of the worst kind denying, of treasonous people that exist in the American power structure. Well, what about that, you're Mr. Hellman? Mr. Hellman, you, now, you, although you have talked throughout the time, what are you doing? that Kennedy was talking. What you, Richard Hellman, let me talk to you for a second. What are you doing in London, O'Keefe? Richard Hellman, listen. What are you doing in London, O'Keefe? Hiding out? Richard Hellman, let's talk about what Mr. Ken O'Keefe has just talked about. As far as American lives, are you concerned about the number of American lives that have been lost in Afghanistan and that the majority of Americans do not want to see the troops continue to stay on the ground? So why is it that Washington wants to stay there against the will of the American people? Now, what Washington, what the White House, the State Department, the Pentagon and most of the Congress want is that we withdraw as quickly as we can, but that we do it in an orderly way, in a decent way, so that we leave Afghanistan, a, a proud nation and a proud uh, people with an ancient history, that we leave them in as good a, situ in a situation as we can, as I say, where where women can go to school. Why, why is that your responsibility? Any, uh, citizen why of is Afghanistan, that the U.S.'s responsibility, Mr. Regardless, regardless, Mr. Uh, regardless, it's not our, well, because we, we, we have a responsibility under the uh, relevant U.N. Uh, treaties to uh, protect international norms of human rights, and we have been there, so if things can be corrected before we leave in an orderly and a decent way, we want to do so because unlike, unlike Iran, we are a free democratic nation with respect for human rights and respect for our neighbors and respect for the people, including women and children and those of different ethnicities, different religions, and different backgrounds. Okay, so that well, we, Mr. Ken O'Keefe, we let, let's look at some of that respect that Mr. Hellman is talking about. Can, uh, I, I wonder about it, the Afghan, Afghan women and children and also men on the ground than it and, is and today. how respected they, they feel when they are at uh, wedding ceremonies that drones, uh, drone attacks are being carried out. And even if they're at funerals, drone attacks have been carried out and they have been killed. And it doesn't seem that there's any remorse on the part of the American military. Again, I will go back to my first question. Do you think that there is a dehumanization process on the ground that the Americans or the U.S.-led forces basically think that they are superior to the natives and really, at the end of the day, couldn't care less if these people live or die? Well, the first thing that's all too predictable is that this is for Ken in the war This Iraq. is for Ken O'Keefe, Washington. Stay with me. Go ahead, London. I, I'm not going to continue this unless you cut him off and allow me to answer the question because this is getting ridiculous that I cannot open my mouth without him interjecting. Yeah, you so ahead, if Ken. he does it again, forget it. I, I'm walking from this. The bottom line is this. 
The pretext for invading Afghanistan is a lie. The FBI never charged Osama bin Laden with anything because they admitted there was no evidence linking him to 9-11. So that was a lie. That was a pretext. Before we invaded and occupied Afghanistan, the poppy crops had almost gone to nothing. Since that time, the heroin trade is now dominated by Afghanistan. NATO troops and American troops have protected this trade. And the CIA is the major drug runner, which is bringing heroin into the streets of all the major cities of the world in particular into Russia and Europe and also into America. And that's part of the agenda, to make this multi-billion dollar industry fund the black ops that the United States is carrying out both in Afghanistan and other parts of the world. And this is the reality. Also, the mineral resources, which are not a secret at all. When the Soviet Union was there back in the 70s and 80s, they had geological surveys, which made very clear that Afghanistan had a stupendous amount of mineral resources, also natural gas. This was part of the agenda. Also, the project for a new American century made very clear that in this global chessboard game, part of the global, the full spectrum dominance agenda, that Afghanistan was key to bringing the gas, in particular from the Caspian Basin, to the Arabian Sea and also to establish permanent military bases in Afghanistan, such as a key pivot point bordering on Iran, Russia, and also China. It is a key area or bordering next to the countries that border with Russia as well, also over towards Pakistan. All of these are the reasons why we're there. And actually, we have no interest in the violence stopping. We want the violence to continue because as long as there's violence, we can then justify our presence. The fact that the United States is demanding that the United States military stays and can conduct night raids and all of this stuff without any kind of prosecution possible and immunity against any kind of war crimes or crimes against humanity says it all. The United States thinks it's above the law. Yes, the troops that are on the ground do feel they're better than the Afghani people, unfortunately, and that is why they're allowed to kill with impunity, and they come back eventually, they come back and they commit suicide themselves, many of them, to the tune of 22 a day, and this chicken hawk trader, probably an uh, Israeli stooge, will sell more American sons and daughters down the river if he has his way. A prostitute chicken hawk is uh, nothing Mr. Hellman, more, let, nothing let me turn less. back to Washington. Let me turn back to Washington them. and get that Richard Hellman back in on this. Know. Richard Hellman, what about that? Why does... Why does the United States insist? Why does the United States insist, uh, as far as the security pact, that they must have immunity? What are they afraid of? Why, if they commit a crime, do they not expect it to be held accountable like anywhere else in the world? This is a normal procedure for American forces or other uh, foreign peacekeeping forces, wherever they may be. It's like the United Nations uh, forces in the Middle East and other parts of the world. They are tried and uh, prosecuted for their crimes under a different system, under a code of military justice with full civil rights, with full rights for the accused, and with full prosecutorial uh, discretion, but Why? they are prosecuted. Why, and if they Americans have, have, if been, they have gone against have the rules of a land? Uh, Why, if they have gone against the normal. laws of a land, would not they be held it's responsible? Nor, That's my it's question, no, sir. It's nor, well, it's a. I, I, I already told you, ma'am, that they've. Uh, it's like other peacekeeping forces around the world. They are not tried by the laws of the nation because, in many cases, there the judiciary is not uh, functioning in a way fully to deal with such matters. That's the case in Iraq, uh, uh, pardon me, in Afghanistan, sadly. But we want to see Afghanistan uh, left in a better situation. And, and, and trust me, for sure, U.S. Uh, forces, if they commit crimes, are prosecuted, are punished to the full extent of American law. And the U.S. forces, as I said, are the best in the world. The NATO forces and the U.S. forces are the best in the world at avoiding collateral damage. Well, yes, well, let's talk a little bit about that collateral damage that yes, you're talking about. Yes, let's just jump in here because well, we're almost some out of time. Been, let's talk about that collateral damage. Killed. We saw soldiers going into villages and in some Afghanistan and, and the some Afghan have, people answer, were witnesses in the villages and some, said several soldiers came in listen, in the middle of the night, invaded their homes listen, and killed so many women and children. And yet we know listen, that one soldier was actually charged for it. And at the end, who knows what will happen? There are many, many stories listen, like that in Afghanistan. Listen, in Iraq, sir. So how you, can you say you, that listen, the Americans listen, are, will be you, held responsible? Since you, since you, let me answer you. Please since do. Since you brought it up. 
since you brought it up, I'm, since I'm going to tell you that none of the Iranian rulers, none of the Ayatollahs or Iranian leaders Answer the question. Who sent I wasn't talking about Iran. I'm talking about Afghanistan, explode, Mr. Hellman. I'm trying to tell you. No, I'm trying to tell you that no one was prosecuted for, what, for, the, for the brutality of the Iran regime when they sent children into the minefields to be blown up. Oh, please, in the Mr. War please, Mr. Hellman. Uh, Mr. So O'Keefe, don't, Mr. So O'Keefe, don't tell your, me, your take, sir, because we're me, just about out of time. Me, and obviously, uh, that, Mr. Hellman does don't not want to deal with a topic at hand. Mr. O'Keefe, your take in general. We have seen time and time again so many crimes committed in these uh, wars, and particularly, let's look at even Afghanistan, where many people say that even the beginning of this war was a pre it happened one month after the 9-11 attacks, and many people would say that planning, obviously, for uh, such an invasion and an attack would definitely take a lot longer time than one month. So many people say the whole thing was based on a pretense to begin with, just for the Americans to get in the area and control natural resources. Your take, sir, in general, where do you see this going from now? Well, it, it is clear that the world is changing and this, this mythical idea of the United States ever having an interest in freedom and democracy and justice is, is finally, finally vanishing and people around the world know the truth about America. I mean, the fact that Bush and Blair and Obama are not going to The Hague facing war crimes charges and crimes against humanity charges. In Iraq, we see a million to two million dead, millions of orphans, millions of refugees, a country that had no Al Qaeda in it, before we invaded and occupied, and now we sit here and gleefully claim that Iraq's problems are because we left. It, it is pure madness. And I'd like to apologize on behalf of all the sensible American people for the nonsense and the madness of this chicken hawk traitor you have in Washington, because clearly, those of us who have any sense know that we've committed massive crimes through our governments, and we must have a deepest of apologies towards all of the people of Afghanistan, Iraq, and every other country we've invaded, occupied, and otherwise terrorized. And this All is right. the truth about American policy. And the sooner the, the world realizes this and, and compels the world to change through American policy, we won't see any, any difference. All right. On that note, I'd like to thank both my guests. Sorry, we're out of time. Out of London, former U.S. Marine, Mr. Ked O'Keefe. Appreciate you being with us. And out of Washington, President Middle East Research Center, Mr. Richard Hellman. And uh, thank you, viewers, for being with us. Make sure you join us same time, same place tomorrow. I'm Marzia Hashimi signing out for myself and all the crew right here in Tehran. Thanks a lot, and goodbye.